so today we're diving into uh, some pretty fascinating stuff. Yeah. Of Billy Graham's sermon, <laughs> but not just any sermon, right? This one uh, was delivered to a packed football stadium. Wow. Even reading the transcript, you can practically feel the energy. I bet. Um, for those maybe not familiar, Billy Graham, huge E name in 20th century evangelism, known for these massive stadium events. Right. And, you know, even if you're not particularly religious yourself, I think there's a lot we can learn from how Graham crafted these impactful messages. Absolutely. I think that's a great point. And it's fascinating how even just the choice of setting itself plays into the message. Oh, totally. You think about it, a football stadium, all that energy, the crowds, the spectacle, those nail biting moments. Yeah. Graham uses that atmosphere to his advantage. It's so smart. And he dives right in with this powerful challenge straight from the book of Joshua. OK. Talking about the Israelites facing this choice, right? Mm. God or idols. Mm. But then Graham flips it around and he asks, are we any different today? Right. With our own gods, you know, materialism, pleasure, all these things. It's like he's holding up a mirror to everyone in those stands. Yeah, he masterfully connects that ancient story to the lives of the people he's speaking to right then and there. Right. And it's interesting because he doesn't just give a general, you know, don't worship idols. Yeah. He calls out television specifically. Wow. And this is the mid 20th century. Right. So the TV is this new symbol of leisure consumerism. Totally. Graham knew exactly what buttons to push to make people really pay attention. Yeah, he's really building his case here, yeah. right? Yeah. He doesn't just say, choose God and leave it at that. <laughs> he wants to get into like the why behind that choice. Okay. So he digs into, you know, Adam and Eve inheriting a sinful nature, yeah. the concept of an age of accountability. Mm -hmm. Like he's laying the groundwork for why this decision is so important. Exactly. And what's interesting is he systematically addresses these other paths that people might try to use to justify their choices. Okay. So, you know, following your conscience, doing good deeds, trying to reform yourself. Like those are good things, right? Sure. But he explains why ultimately those things aren't enough on their own. Okay. He's really emphasizing this need for a complete transformation of the heart. Wow. A turning away from all those idols he's been highlighting. And he makes it clear this isn't some vague decision you can just kind of put off for later. No. He keeps repeating this phrase, choose you this day whom you will serve. Not tomorrow, mm -mm. not next week, right here, right now. Yeah. It really amps up the urgency. Absolutely. And it's not just about telling them, you know, what the consequences of the choices are. Yeah. He actually paints these two very distinct pictures. Oh. One of, you know, blessing and joy and eternal life. Okay. And then the other darkness regret and separation from God. Wow. So it really mm. heightens the stakes, right? It makes yeah. that choice seem even more critical. Yeah, like you're really at a crossroads here. Exactly. And he uses all these different examples to illustrate his points, mm. both from the Bible and from history. Okay. Like he talks about Alexander the Great and how he conquered the world because he just refused to waver. Mm -hmm. And then he contrasts that with someone who's wishy-washy in their faith. Yeah. He compares them to a wave being tossed around by the sea. It's powerful imagery. It is. And it really speaks to how he's appealing to both our heads and our hearts at the same time. Oh, interesting. On the one hand, you have this very rational argument being laid out. Right. But then on the other hand, he's tapping into something deeper, something more visceral. I see. It's not just about understanding the message intellectually but really feeling it deep down. And he tells this story about a football player running the wrong way. Oh, yeah. And it's brilliant. I love that story. He wasn't trying to mess up. Yeah. You know, he, he was giving it his all, mm -hmm. but he was going the wrong direction. Right. And it makes you think, are there areas in my own life yeah. where I'm doing the same thing? It's such a great example because it highlights how you can be sincere. You can be trying your best. Right. But you can still be completely off track. Yeah. And it raises that question. Are we aligned with what truly matters, mm. even in our good intentions? That's something that goes way beyond just religion. Exactly. Yeah, it really makes you think. It does. And this is where Graham takes that idea of choice and... Uh, and really makes it actionable. Right. He yeah. doesn't let people off the hook with just these vague platitudes. Yeah. He gives them concrete steps. Yeah. He lays it out there, doesn't he? Yeah. Repent, receive, follow. It's a call to action. Yeah. But I think it's interesting how he also doesn't shy away from the weight of that decision. Right. He talks about, you know, the cost of following Christ, the potential for suffering, even rejection. Right. Like it's not going to be easy. Exactly. Yeah. But he balances that with this incredible message of hope. This idea of forgiveness 
a clean slate, a God who chooses not to even remember your past mistakes. Wow. It's so powerful. Yeah. And it all ties back to this idea of making a choice. So it's hopeful, but it's still like urgent, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And he makes it so immediate. Right. It's not some kind of distant promise. Right. It's about experiencing that freedom right here, right now. In this moment. Yeah. And he even says something like, Go ahead. imagine going to bed tonight knowing that your past is forgiven, cleansed. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. It is. And it's interesting how he even uses a secular example to make that point hit home. Okay. He quotes Guy Lafleur. Oh, wow. The hockey legend <laughs> who said that you only have one past, but there are many futures. And I think that's brilliant because he takes this idea of choice, which can be very, you know, complex. Right. And he makes it relatable even for somebody who might not necessarily connect with the religious context totally yeah he's speaking to everyone in that stadium right yeah like meeting them where they are exactly and then he takes it a step further okay. because he doesn't just ask people to think about these things privately in their own heads right he makes it public oh yeah how so he asks those who are ready to make a change okay to stand up right there in the middle of this massive crowd Wow. It's no longer just a private thought. I see. It becomes a public declaration. That must have been electrifying. Oh, I bet. You can practically, even just reading the transcript right, Yeah. you can hear that energy shifting, the rustle of clothes, the murmuring, the anticipation. And that's actually a very classic persuasive technique. Really? Think about it. When you make a choice public, you're much more likely to follow through with it. That's so true. You're accountable not just to yourself, okay, but to everyone who witnessed that commitment. That's interesting. Yeah. And he ties it back to scripture as well, doesn't he? He does. Like he mentions how Joshua challenged the Israelites publicly. Right. How Moses called upon the people in the same way. Mm -hmm. And he even points out that these moments were recorded in the Bible for future generations. Yeah. Talk about adding weight to a decision, right? Exactly. He's saying that this choice matters. Yeah. Not just in this moment. Wow. But for eternity. That's a lot of pressure. And it's a powerful way of emphasizing the significance of what he's asking people to do. And then it gets even more personal than that. Yep. Because he reminds everybody that this choice is ultimately theirs and theirs alone. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he acknowledges the influence of, you know, family and friends. True, the people you surround yourself with. Right, exactly. But he's very clear that when it comes to the specific decision, oh. you can't let anyone else make it for you. Wow. You have to step into what he calls that lonely arena okay. and confront your own heart. It's that moment of truth, isn't it? Like you're standing at the crossroads. Yeah. And you got to choose your path. Right. And and that's where faith comes in, I think. Okay. Because Graham's point is that it's not about, you know, ach achieving some kind of perfection through your own willpower. Right. It's about surrender. Okay. It's about acknowledging a power greater than yourself I see. and trusting in that grace. Yeah. He really drives that point home. Mm -hmm. He says uh, something like, I can't live the Christian life on my own. Right. It's the Holy Spirit living in me, Christ living through me. Right. It's that idea that you're not in it alone. Wow. And that's a powerful concept, even, you know, ev even outside of the strictly religious context. Yeah. I mean, we all have those moments in life where we need to draw strength from something larger than ourselves. Totally. Whether it's our communities or a sense of purpose. Right. Or, yes, even faith. You know, it's funny. We started out talking about this Billy Graham sermon delivered in a football stadium. Mm -hmm. And you think it would feel kind of, uh, you know, outdated. Yeah. Or even a little preachy. Right. But it doesn't at all. It really doesn't. It's really mm -hmm. timeless. It's because he's speaking to these universal experiences, right? Yeah. Making choices that matter. Right. Facing the consequences of those choices. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, how do you want to shape the kind of life you live? And he does it with this really interesting blend of, you know, storytelling, yeah. scriptural references, mm -hmm. even a little bit of humor sprinkled in. Right. He's got it all. Yeah. And he doesn't shy away from the hard stuff either. Oh. You know, the challenge is the possibility stumbling along the way. Of course. But there's always that like undercurrent of hope. Yeah. That promise of redemption. Really powerful. It, is, it makes you think, are you really living with intention mm -hmm. or are you just going through the motions? That's a great question. 
And even if your heart's in the right place, yeah. are you running the right way? Exactly. Are you on the right path? Yeah. Those are questions I think we should all be asking ourselves. You know? Absolutely. Regardless of your background, your beliefs. A hundred percent. It's really about that self-reflection. It is. And as we wrap up this deep dive, you know, one final thought from Graham's sermon that I think is worth pondering. Yeah, go set. He reminds us that nowhere in the Bible does it promise a tomorrow. Wow. And it's a powerful statement because it's a call to action. Right. It's about seizing the moment and making choices that matter today. It really makes you think, what will you choose? 